Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to get started using the h.pathfriend project in your game. First off, we're going to create a new Unity project. So let's just use open Unity up. We're going to use Unity 5.5 for this tutorial. So I'm just going to create a new project here. Let's call it pathfinding test. There we go. So the second step is to download the package. You can do this either from the Unity Asset Store or from the package website. And the package website is on this URL, aaronbrandberg.com slash a star slash download. So if you have bought it from the Unity Asset Store, you can just enter your invoice number here and then the uh, download buttons will get enabled. Or you can download the free version just to check it out. I've already downloaded the package, so I'm going to open that version instead. So just double click the file and Ubuntu will open it. And then if you click the import button, then Ubuntu will import the package into your project. For this tutorial, we're going to create a new scene by just clicking the new scene button in Unity. No, nope, I don't want to save that. And then we're going to create a new environment that our AI can navigate. So I'm just going to create a new plane and center it at the world origin and scale it to say 10, 10, 10. I'm also going to attach some material to it. And then I'm going to create a few cubes that we're going to use as obstacles. So a new cube, set a material, and I'm going to scale to say uh, five, five, five. That's five meters. Now I'm just going to duplicate this cube a few times so I can get a more interesting environment for our AI. Now the next step is to actually add pathfinding to the scene. So to do this, we're going to add a new game object and call it a star. And then we're going to add the pathfinding component to it. So this component is the central component in the whole package. It holds all the data and all the graphs and it calculates all the paths. So uh, we can add the graph to it. There are several types of graphs available in the package. Uh, we're going to use the grid graph, which is the most basic graph, but you can read about the other ones in the documentation or check out the example scenes. So if we have the grid graph, we can expand it by clicking here on the uh, header. And you can see there's a faint outline here for the graph. I'm actually going to switch to wireframe mode so you can see that more clearly. And you can switch to the uh, scaling tool and you will see these gizmos here, which will allow us to resize it. So I'm going to resize it so that just covers our scene like that. And then to actually generate a graph, I'm going to click the scan button. So now we can see that a graph has been generated. Each uh, node here is one of these tiles. So I'm one small square. And the colors just mean that uh, this is a different connected component from this one, which means that there is no path possible from this blue area to the green area. And there is no possible path from the green area to the uh, cyan bluish area here. Uh, but we don't really want the nodes to be on top of our obstacles. Uh, so we are going to create a new layer and name that obstacles. It seems I've already created one here actually. And then we're going to put all our cubes in that layer like that. Now we can check out the height testing area here. So uh, to place nodes in the world, the script fires a ray from up from the sky down towards the ground and it checks where it hits. So it uses the Unity physics engine and uh, colliders that are attached to everything. So by default, uh, everything is included. Uh, so it will hit anything that it finds, but we can exclude the obstacles layer and click scan again. And you will see that now all the nodes have been placed on the ground instead of on top of the obstacles. But now the obstacles aren't detected as obstacles. So to fix that, we're going to check out the collision testing area here. So for each node, 
it will check if there are any obstacles within that node. And by default, nothing is included, which means nothing is treated as an obstacle. So we're going to change that to include the obstacle layer and click scan again. And now you can see that it has created unwalkable nodes around each obstacle. So each red dot represents a node that the AI cannot traverse. We can also uh, change the margin around the obstacles by changing the diameter setting here. So one means a single node. So it will check within a capsule, which has a diameter of one node. If we change it to two, it will change, um, check a capsule with a diameter of two nodes, which is actually two world units now. So now we have a graph and we want to add an AI that can move around here. So we're going to create a new game object again, name that AI and uh, move that up to the ground. And to visualize it, I'm going to create a new cylinder and add that as a child to the AI. And uh, zero out the coordinates. And you usually want uh, the base of the character to be where the pivot is. And you want to move the visualization up so the pivot is near the ground and the character is up here. You don't want the pivot near the center of the character. So there are several included movement scripts in the package. One of them is called AI Path, which is the most generic one that we're going to use here. So just search for AI Path and that will add both the secret component and the AI Path script. So the secret component is just a helper script. So the AI path script will tell the secret component that it wants to move from say here to over here. And the secret com component will in turn call the A star path component, which calculates the path. The secret on the other hand handles modifiers and stuff. And we'll get into that later in the tutorial. So the AI path script uh, has a target field, which is where it wants to move to. So we are going to create a new game object, call that target and place that on the ground, say over here. And then we're going to assign the target game object to that field. And now we um, had to make sure one thing. Uh, the cylinder here has a collider and the AI also uses a ray cost to find out where the ground is. You can see this uh, um, greenish line here. This is a ray cost that we'll use to fire from here down to, towards the ground to see if it hits the ground and make sure the AI is yeah, on the ground. If it hits this collider, then it will try to place itself on top of the AI's own head and we really don't want that. So we are going to make sure that this is in a separate layer or actually we're just going to remove that one. But otherwise you can adjust the layer mask here. And then we're going to try it out and see how it works. And we can see our AI moving towards the target, which is precisely what we want. And we can even move around the target here and the AI will follow. You can see that the green path here is the calculated path of the character. It's the secret script that draws this. You can enable it or disable it using the draw gizmos toggle. Uh, the AI by default recalculates the path every 0.5 seconds. So if we move it here, you can see that it follows it after about 0.5 seconds. So we can increase the speed of the character and uh, move faster and we can also make it follow the path um, more or less closely by changing the uh, peak next waypoint distance so if we just move the target again and I'm going to pause it here so the AI will try to move towards a point on the path uh, just a few meters ahead of it and uh, that point is the intersection of this circle with the green path 
So that circle has a radius of pick next waypoint distance. So we can adjust this using this variable. And if we set it to like a really large value here and uh, forward a few frames, you can see that now it moves towards this point. And now it will actually, this, this is way too high. So if we let this play, it will try to enter the obstacle because it tries to move to this point and yeah, that doesn't really work out. So you have to make sure that this is low enough that it follows the path relatively closely. But if you set it too low, then of course, say 0.1, then uh, that might lead to uh, where it have you, which where it uh, tries to follow the path too closely and just misses all the time. I think I'll set that to uh, 1.5 units. You also saw that uh, this path isn't actually a straight line, and we can improve on that by adding a modifier. So modifiers are uh, something that post processes process. So modifiers are something that post processes the path after it has been calculated. So in the components menu, we can find a list of modifiers. And the one we are going to use is the ray cost modifier. So the ray cost modifier tries to simplify the path by checking uh, for each point if uh, there is a straighter path that it can take. Uh, so by default, it uses uh, ray costing, which is just unity ray costing. So it will probably try to find out if from this point there is a straight line to. Um, some point over here that doesn't hit any uh, colliders. So we can try to move over here. And you can see that it has simplified the path a great deal. Uh, it sometimes uh, exits out from the graph because you can see that this line doesn't actually hit this obstacle, but it is pretty close. So we might want to fix that. And uh, to do that, we can use thick gray costs instead. So instead of checking only around this line, it will check if there is an obstacle uh, within, say, um, 0.5 units around this line. So if we let the uh, calculate path again, yeah, it will avoid that collider now. You can also use graph ray costing, which doesn't use physics, but uses the graph instead. So if we disable ray costing and use graph ray costing, it will check if there is um, a line here that doesn't exit out from the graph, which can be useful or it might not be depending on the game. So that's it for this tutorial. For more tutorials, take a look at the online documentation, and you can also check out the included example scenes in the project.